For today's video, Ooh. I build what seems to be a universally loved high-end DIY speaker kit by a company called CSS Audio. And let me tell you, gaming on these speakers genuinely blew my mind. Oh, <coughs> oh that gunshot, I felt that in my chest. Wow, that hurt. But before we get to the butt-clenchingly visceral gaming experience these offer, we need to build them first. Ooh, lots of paper. Cool. Ooh, first, we have this. Let's have a look at it. And then, look at that bad boy. Oh, that is that is quite heavy. Oh, that looks like the kind of thing you use to trigger earthquakes. Some nice die-cast aluminium action. Now I'm just gonna interrupt myself pretending to know what I'm talking about here to tell you a bit more about the speaker kit I'm unboxing. This kit is called the One TDX, and if you buy it with the Baltic Birch Cabinet Kit like I have here, it costs just over a thousand dollars before tax, which is a decent chunk of change for a speaker kit, but according to the internet, they are well worth the money, and that hype around them is one of the main reasons I actually reached out to CSS Audio and asked them to send over a kit for a video, which they very graciously did. So now that we know what kind of beefcake DIY speaker kit we're working with here, let's jump past the rest of the unboxing and watch me squirm trying to do some basic carpentry. Now the first step is to glue up the Baltic birch cabinets, which I'm gonna do one at a time because for some reason, clamps cost a million dollars each. sides of the speaker. Now according to the instructions, you start with a side flat on the table and then you just kind of build it up from there. It also recommends dry fitting first, which may sound uncomfortable, but you don't want to go stuffing wood in the wrong place and then getting your glue everywhere. I'll start with this side for whatever reason. Hey, it's starting to look like a speaker. A pretty big one at that. And before I glued up the wood, I just dusted the seams to make sure we got a nice tight bond. Oh, I actually forgot to mention, the reason that I went with Baltic Birch over MDF for the cabinet material was because Baltic Birch is easier to finish. You don't need to put veneer or whatever on it, you can just treat the cabinet itself. But that does mean while gluing up, I want to protect the wood from any glue spilling onto it, making it harder to finish later on. So I am going to tape up the edges with masking tape. So now we've got a little bit of protection, so let's get to gluing. And I'm just gonna put some glue. It's kind of glue like that. Oh, so much poo's coming out now. So we wanna kinda, it's kinda where it's gonna stick. Oh, louder, so much of stress. So then this goes in like that. I did something wrong. And it was at this point that I realized, despite the dry fitting, I still managed to screw it up. Oh no. Luckily, my incompetence was pretty easily rectified. Oh, I think we're okay. We're gonna do that. We're just gonna pretend like I didn't initially glue it up incorrectly. Luckily, aside from that moment of terror, gluing up the rest of the cabinet was relatively straightforward. Ugh. But now we need to clamp it. Now taking out a mortgage on the clamps was definitely worth it because I used the pressure from the clamps to force all of the panels into a final snug fit. That's looking really good. And while that's standing there building up strength, I'm gonna start preparing the panels for its twin brother. And after so successfully cobbling together the first speaker cabinet, I was now a carpentry master. I was basically Harrison Ford, which meant building the second cabinet was trivial for someone of my skill. Hey, would you look at that? I built my own boxes and they actually look really neat. Aside from a, a couple of little scuff marks that we'll deal with in sanding while finishing them, 
I actually think they turned out really well. It's very exciting. Which means we can move on to building the crossover. Now it's time to solder the crossover together, which is the bit in the speaker which dictates which frequencies go to what driver in the speaker. It's very important. Interestingly, CSS Audio does offer two crossovers for all of their speakers. There's this stock kind of like loser crossover, uh, and then you can also pay 400 extra dollars to get like an Uber EP crossover. Now when it comes to the hi-fi community, uh, the whole capacitor quality thing is quite a hot debate. There are two camps. The one side is like any reasonable quality capacitor is fine. The only thing that matters is the values of the capacitor. And then there's the other side of the argument, which would probably disown their children if they found out their brain wasn't wired together with like honey beeswax Duland caps or whatever. Either way, I think it's great that CSS Audio offers you both options. Now this is a really cool part about this kit. It comes with a 3D printed cross board with little slots in it for all of the different components and then there's a wiring diagram on the back which should make soldering up the crossover pretty idiot proof so let's jump to it Now, as is tradition on this channel, I am going to be censoring my soldering work because even if I was the world's best solderer, some of you would still find a reason to complain about it. Would you look at that? I finished the second crossover, which was way easier to do than the first one. And I'm actually pretty happy with the results. So with that, we need to go finish the speaker cabinet, which Anna has said she wants to do. Before Anna starts finishing the cabinet, I just wanted to drill some bigger holes on the back of the cabinet for a sexy different binding posts I wanted to use that didn't come with the kit. Damn, look at how good they look. Anna did such a good job finishing them. They've got this really nice golden sheen to them, which means now all that's left to do is assemble these suckers. That looks nice, all them different materials and textures. Now here comes the really fun bit, screwing right next to a soft dome tweeter. Just one slip and whoop, there goes your tweeter. Now it has been three weekends of work to finish these speakers. It was quite a lot of effort, but it was a very rewarding process. And I think they turned out super well. Anna did a great job finishing them. And yeah, I think they look great. And they also sound amazing. Playing Battlefield 5 on this speaker setup in this room was a crazy gaming experience. <laughs> it feels like I'm playing Cyber Saving Private Ryan here. What the it's quite difficult to explain what really good sound offers you, but I think the best way to describe them is that they're like gaming with a really good pair of headphones, uh, but they have a couple of distinct advantages to headphones. The first one is headphones are right by your ears, and no matter how good they are at creating a sense of space in the sound, 
everything still kind of just sounds like it's around your head. Whereas these speakers create a much bigger sense of space in their sound and they put the acoustics of the game environment in your room. You can really hear the air, if that makes sense. It sounds really dumb, but the, the way it renders like distant gunfire as well, it sounds like you can hear for miles. And actually, when I first set up these speakers, I was quite worried that positional audio was going to be an issue while gaming because they're just two speakers in the front of the room. Surely everything was just going to sound like it's in front of you. But <laughs> these speakers encircle you with sound. I don't know how, but they're somehow able to communicate to your brain that there are things above and behind you. And they have honestly some of the best positional audio while gaming I've heard ever, pretty much. I could hear the tank drive over me. Like, how is it doing that? How are they creating sound that far around? And then the second big advantage to these speakers over a good pair of headphones is their bass. These speakers kick hard, deep, and fast. It is really something to behold. And these speakers move a lot of air in the room, so there's a real physicality to all of the explosions and the gunfire. Like when somebody gets on a Browning 50 cal, which is like a big machine gun on a tank, it, you can feel every round in your chest as it's firing off. And it's because of these two advantages, the very physical and crazy realistic sound, and the way that the speakers encircle you with the air in the game, it just leads to such immersion. It feels like you're in the game environment. But now that I'm done frothing at the mouth over the gaming experience with these speakers, uh, it's not all Zeus tickles and baby smiles. These speakers have some real practical disadvantages. Now the first one is that they're passive speakers, which means they need external amplification and a digital to analog converter. And those things cost more money and they take up space. The amp that I used for this setup was, and I'm gonna throw my back out here, give me a second. Okay, I think I'm gonna kind of rest it on my knee like that. Now I used this insanely heavy amplifier to power this setup. Uh, it's called a, a Primo Unico, I think is its name. And funnily enough, it is actually a 21 year old amplifier that I bought used. It was apparently handmade in Italy back in 2001, which is amazing. It's got 80 watts of class AB power and it worked really well with these speakers. Uh, it doesn't have a digital to analog converter in it though, so I used a topping D7S for that, which is another $400. Now I did also try the speakers with a little SMSL AD18, which is a small amp DAC combo that you can buy off of Amazon for about $150. And while it definitely didn't sound bad with the little AD18, which also has 80 watts of class D power, which that's a whole different story, but um, it didn't sound bad with that amp. It's just that the, the whole sense of space that I was talking about about was a bit diminished maybe from like a 10 to an 8 and the bass authority wasn't quite there in the same way and it wasn't quite as as girthy and it didn't kick as hard with that little amp now having mentioned all of the extra stuff you need the next disadvantage is definitely price you can pay thousands of dollars for a pair of headphones, but you can also get a very good pair of headphones for way less money. Now, the third disadvantage is that uh, because they're not headphones, you, you can't do VoIP. So if you like shouting at people on the internet, you, you can't do that with speakers. And then the third caveat's a pretty big one. Speakers are quite room and placement sensitive. So if you have like a weirdly shaped room and you don't set up the speakers very well, they may not give you that same uncanny sense of game air environment. Uh, and if the room's pretty big, they may not punch as hard or they may have too much bass if you have them too close to a wall. And there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. Unlike headphones, where if you put them on, they just always sound the way that the headphones sound. Uh, so that's definitely something to bear in mind. So there are definitely some caveats to this speaker setup, but it did offer a genuinely spectacular gaming setup. And I think the main takeaway from this video for me is that audio is definitely one of the most underrated aspects when it comes to an immersive gaming experience. And yeah, maybe, maybe your next upgrade should be something audio related to really step up your audio game. 
Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much CSS Audio for sending over these amazing speaker kits. I really enjoyed building them. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Watch another video, a suggestion will pop up in a second. And until the next video, bye-bye.